will defend to the death their native soil, aiding each other like good comrades to the utmost of their strength. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Oh, God damn it. Fuck this. I'm out of here. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welder here, and recently a new DCS mod came out. It is the Spitfire Mark IX. This is a very interesting and very iconic plane that was developed during World War II. And it was. It played a very key role in the Battle of Britain, which was the largest air battle in history. I, for one, have been waiting for ages to actually get this thing, and let me tell you right now, this plane is pretty difficult to fly. I'm only just getting used to it now, and I don't even know if I'm getting used to it at all. But it's a really good plane. I do believe that the Mark IX was designed after the Battle of Britain. I um, was talking to one of my friends, his name is Keys um, KCB, or his screen name is, that the Spitfire had an issue when it came to rolling. The Mark IX, however, does not have that issue. So if you're to fly upside down, the engine won't cease or cut, or if you roll, the engine won't cease and cut. However, I do notice that this thing has quite a bit of a heating problem when it comes to the radiator. So um, I'll get more into that now, but or, well, into that later. But first, let's go ahead and get ourselves situated with this plane. I'm going to start with the takeoff. It is going to be absolutely embarrassing. Alright, so now we are in Spitfire. We are aligned on the runway, and I'm going to start taking off. Now, a few things I need to mention before I actually uh, start. This is a very uh, powerful airplane. This is a fighter. And that means that this has one beast of an engine, and since it has one beast of an engine, we're going to be having a lot of torque from that propeller, so there needs to be a lot of compensation from that said torque. And uh, that's where the biggest problem is going to be. But with that said, I'm going to increase the throttle, try to compensate as best as I can, but, you know, this may not be pretty. And before you ask, yes. I disabled the takeoff assist, so it's going to be a painful trip for me. Oh boy. Or maybe not. All right, well, it's time to... to bring up my landing gear. I hope, there we go. I was a little bit worried there, thinking that I might have actually damaged my gear at one way or another. All right, so when it comes down to this aircraft, there are a few things that you need to take into consideration. This is, first and foremost, a fighter. It is designed to be maneuverable, and maneuverable this thing is. One of the nice advantages of the Spitfire is that it was incredibly maneuverable. You had an elliptical wing, and then you had a cut wing. I do believe that you're offered both in this, uh, in this mod, if you so choose to buy it. The second thing is that the radiator temperature you do not want to overheat this thing. But as you can see, this thing has a very tight turning radius. And I also noticed through a bit of trial and error that mill power is the best setting for the said uh, turning radius. Full power, you can go full power. However, in doing so, you risk bringing up the temperature of your radiator. 
So you really need to have a proper control of the uh, Spitfire's uh, throttle. More so than normal, because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that that radiator temperature is down. Otherwise, you're going to have a very short flight. So, as it stands right now, very nice plane, very agile. Quite an acrobatic beast. And yes, I can in fact roll it without killing the engine. It's also very responsive. A little difficult to control at first, but once you actually get the hang of it, it's not that bad of a plane. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into a dogfight. Alright, so now it's time to get into a dogfight and try not to stall. Alright, so I'm going to be um, fighting a pair of 190s with my little comrade wingman, but um, let's just say that he never wins this fight. Alright, so dogfighting in a Spitfire. I am going to be totally honest with you, I am not that good at flying this plane and dogfighting in this said plane. But I will say that I am starting to know uh, certain characteristics about this plane the more I fly it. And I must say, to a point, it is a very good plane when it comes to maneuvering. As such. Like this uh, other plane ahead of me, it's not going to outturn. It could try, but it's not going to do a great job at it. Alright, so. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about trigger discipline. I have none. But I think I did destroy this guy. At least I hope so. Trigger Discipline is something you really need for this uh, dogfight, especially in the Spitfire, especially in all of these World War II planes, but even more especially, I'm starting to like that word more and more. Hang on, so let's see, did I take him out? Well, my uh, wingman's about to die, this guy. Um... Doesn't look too healthy. And that guy wasn't taken out of the picture. But at the very least, he has some disadvantages now. I blew off one of his ailerons, so good luck fighting me. But yeah, trigger discipline, or actually hitting your target in the first place, is going to be a little difficult. Another thing is that... It's very counterintuitive, but you don't need all the power in the world to climb in this thing. Especially if your radiator is going to be giving you issues. Yeah, as I said, um, use your radiator. Or be mindful of your radiator. Right now, mine is actually getting uh, very hot, so I actually need to lose pow even more power. But this guy keeps going, refusing to die. We'll see how well I can change that.
Yeah, but usually you want to increase the throttle when you're climbing, but there's so much power that this Spitfire has that it isn't always needed or even advisable, especially if you have a an overheating radiator. Alright, um, as I said, trigger discipline, not my strong point. Oh, there we go. At least I got you. Ah, oh, goodbye, you fascist bastard. Oh, did I miss all of that? Oh, come on! Alright, I shot him. Finally! Got something out of us.
Oh, well, in that case, see you in hell. Alright, so, that is the Supermarine Spitfire. Champion of the Battle of Britain. Now, before anyone says it, yes, I do know that there were plenty of other planes that were in the Battle of Britain as well. But this happens to be the most iconic, and this is the one that stuck out. It's a really good plane. Definitely a little bit hard to control, if you haven't noticed. But it is a really good dogfighter, incredibly maneuverable. You just need to worry about one thing, and I'm going to point it out very quickly. So, I'm putting in full power now. You'll notice that the radiator is getting hotter, hotter, hotter. And now, let's start climbing. As you can see, the temperature gauge is getting higher, higher, and higher. Also going to do more maneuvering as well. See if that does anything for it. Yes, it doesn't. So in that case, I'm just going to raise the nose. Make their radiator beg for air. Because when you do that, oh yeah, that's definitely getting the needle to uh, spike up. Alright, so. Did I just see it? No, not yet. Ah, there we go. Alright, so if it gets hot enough, then you're going to get vapors, and eventually you're going to have the engine seize. Good luck getting this thing started up. Oh well. As I said, God damn it, fuck this, or whatever, I'm out. I shall bail out. See you on the ground, you beautiful Spitfire you. But with that said, that is the Super Marine Spitfire. Hope you guys enjoyed. But as always, you guys have a nice day.